Hello. Um, I just wanted to wrap up on the um, aesthetics, your uh, attempt at designing a nightclub. I was in a mall getting uh, groceries and I came across a couple of uh, escape rooms, which I guess are popular nowadays. It's kind of a odd, um, odd phenomena. Um, and I wanted to talk about, um, let's, we, last uh, lecture we talked about the, the um, method acting or acting from something re so-called real in the actor and in the script, finding real pinpoint emotions so that you can bring those forward, the Stanislavskian uh, method. And the Brechtian, which is about presentational, presenting ideas, presenting um, possibilities, presenting um, uh, arguments, debates, so forth, to be decided on by the audience member. So this is a little, a quick little lecture on what you have completed in a a nightclub, a dance club, how is this different than the escape room? How is it different than immersive environments like um, famous one if you get to go is Art Tech House in Chelsea Market, projection on all walls. Um, so what is, um, what, uh, what, what, what's, what's the differentiation? What are the aesthetics? What, um, if I uh, posited before that somehow kitsch is um, fatuous and indulgent and um, over um, uh, over sentimentalizing uh, non-critical approach to design and, and uh, design aesthetics and design ethics uh, what are, how are we seeing category within uh, the use value of each space proceeding upward. These are shots from clubs, um, which are the basic, I think this is a basic kind of like pivot point. Last essay we talked about um, of, of Guy Debord and his idea of um, uh, the society of spectacle. Um, so what, uh, what, um, what is a space trying to reify, change, transform in terms of the capital of a society, the capital of, of a city, um, uh, a society? How is it taking your money? What's it actually doing for you beyond bragging rights and Instagrammable things? How do you enter into this? These are clubs from around the world. This is playing with general geometrics. Um, uh, the, these are um, kind of where I get my source to refine my aesthetics or at least see what people I admire are doing things out there. You can find them online. It's just being curious about them. They are. Architectural Digest, mm, that's kind of bougie. D Dazine is the one I'm having you go to to look for uh, special topics like in 3D printing, um, s staging, immersive environments, and things like that. Domus, I've been seeing that magazine since I was young. Um, it's the Domus Academy is in um, Milan. Uh, very old, very famous magazine, Arc Daily, is fairly new. Um, Indian architect builder, Down Mags. Um, somehow this is this has come up in um, scale. Uh, design detail and dwell, which you can see at Whole Foods uh, checkout line. Um, so, uh, we're, we're, as I said over and over again in these lectures, 
I want you to <coughs> to um, be a vacuum cleaner, but be a critical vacuum cleaner of your society for this class. Be curious about what is possibly out there, what is strange, or for whatever reason you took this class, um, why is design sort of halfway between technologies and art. Uh, that's basically because it portends to a use value, but as we can see in some um, scenography, immersive environments, and other things, it not always portend to a use value. These are objects in themselves like um, what uh, uh, Emmanuel Kant and Clement Greenberg, who has a famous essay called On Modernist Painting, which describes uh, the, the essence of a work of art, a, a painting, for example, is actually applying um, pigment to a ground. It is not the, the careful study of creating a window looking onto a reality, but the, the ground itself. So um, he was uh, writing about the abstract expressionist painters of the, um, the late 50s, from Jackson Pollock to maybe Rothko to Morris Lewis to the, to the people who took this to the furthest level of minimalism, Donald Judd, Morris Lewis, drip painted pigment on the canvas and there was no even binder so this this um, accommodates this idea of Clement Greenberg that um, following Kant a, a work of culture like jurisprudence is something to which a precedent has been set the precedent is an essentialism over and over and over again is the painting on canvas. Once canvas has got separated from churches in the Baroque era, I think, and um, took on a more secular sort of stature, this was clearly um, the case. So these are the top architectural magazine, another club. I like setting the timer, going in, getting these things, looking at them, being um, uh, uh, at awe in some of them, wondering where they're actually showing up. And then trying to see what um, what is that operation, such as the minimalism here, um, the lighting here, and the, the sort of fragments and fractured um, things overhead um, this is a, a bizarre, um, not parametric, bizarre, um, curved, almost 3D printed surface <coughs> departing from the squarish right angles. And the color and the lighting is gorgeous. Um, here's a club, a cacophony, um, people doing things. Um, lovers having kisses, um, people uh, drinking alcohol, people talking loudly, people trying to talk over loud music. Um, um, I go into these places and just quickly note what are particular things and to try and contrast these to other things. People who seem to be alone, um, who enter the club alone, as opposed to people who enter it with their whole wingmen, you know, their old posse. Um, what is, um, and of course, um, desire and sexuality exude through this, but as I said before, these might be spaces of frustration too. Um, like the stage space, like a escape room, there are agendas, but the, um, the interesting part of why I assigned you this is that you are going to have to be detective-like and find the agenda for yourself. So here's a large club, pre-COVID, people are meeting, uh, also proxemics. Uh, during your day in business, 
it pretty much go without touch. There's there's a very touch aversion in American society for various reasons, um, not just uh, like intrusion and in, in that, but there's um, it is we see this pre-COVID that um, humans are very social um, hominids and they like to be in proximity. Uh, smell the heat, smell the sweat, uh, be there, dance um, to big thumping beats. Um, again, it's to try and create this this cocktail of, of possibilities. Here are scenes in Rome. We have piazzas. We have people on eating on the streets. This is near Campo di Fiore, or this is near Bar della Pacha. Um, so you have the stage setting of beautiful old buildings, uh, beautiful people dressed up for these things, uh, uh, nights of Epicureanism outside. Um, uh, and then this is a scene inside Testaccio, which is the ancient Roman dump heap where they put all of the nightclubs around it. Um, Rome, again, such an, uh, Rome, again, such an opulent, this is Rome on the river. So this whole notion of breads and circuses, um, what the populace needs in order not to rebel is bread and circuses. Here's the place that made that famous um, outside of the Colosseum. Um, you get the circuses, you get the spectacle, you get the spectacle taking off uh, frustration, a frustrated energy. You also get bread thrown up into the um, uh, the the first or second tier seating for the population. The equivalent of this is something of the manner of an unemployed person sitting home and watching daytime TV all day long. Um, what uh, what levels of frustrations and riots did your uh, did Rome face with three quarters of their population from uh, originating from outside of Rome. Going further, um, uh, I used to sit here at one of these tables and just type looking at the facade of the Pantheon. Uh, again, the piazza, like the club, like the mall, suburban mall, it was just in one today, uh, like the contrivance of the escape room, um, these things have similarities and have different intents for, uh, for um, narratives. Moving further inside the club, what is expressed in terms of darkness and light, uh, what are you supposed to see? Are you away from the harsh glare that would make someone um, attractive in a club, of somewhat attract unattractive outside of a club? What, um, oh, that's the theater. Um, yeah, what, um, this is their work, more or less Brechtian work, um, inside um, this uh, retrofitted factory in northern Minneapolis um, uh, for these sorts of, of work and drama and so forth. Um, moving further um, into a, a more or less Brechtian theater, there's Salman Rushdie, um, uh, Salman, there's uh, Samuel Beckett, um, who has his own spin on existentialism um, in his writing, the so-called nonsensicalness of his writing. Um, the, the forever hipster look here, the glasses. Um, uh, and then we have the stage space, creating, um, changing, reifying spectacle. Um, uh, projections used again, projections in this space, um, layering with this, um, uh, uh, and all of this is, is specifically chosen 
with um, with uh, the opera in mind. Going further into what simple or complex things people use to stage their work with, um, you see a sequence of looks. Um, you see, and then now we're getting to Ivo von Hof in the Shakespeare's Roman plays. Again, um, I was right here, and when they said to you, you're really supposed to come on stage to be a part of the drama, I was on stage. He did this again in Network, where the, the, the piece which came from a 70s movie, which starred Brian Cranston, um, had some seats on stage for people who, could, who would be there to eat a meal. So there's uh, an ambiguity of, of staging space. So I came up here, I walked around, I sat on this couch. Every half an hour I could have a beer. Um, in the six hours of the whole performance, there's general... Uh, uh, um, intermission, but then there are these projections because the piece was spoken in Dutch. So these are projected overhead. There are these lineup of Samson TVs that were slid between the audience. The audience, um, the actors move through this area and they were mic'd. Um, so um, I would see this, I would see them act over here. It provided a fragmentation to the piece, which I enjoyed. Kings of War was another piece um, of the three dramas, Shakespearean dramas. He, was do he did the three Shakespearean plays, I think it was four to six hours. Um, it went by so fast. It was very enjoyable. Uh, Kings of War, three um, uh, dramas, uh, Richard II, Henry IV, um, and one more. Um, so combining this, it's in modern dress. It's using projection, projected media. Um, this was the, um, the Roman drama um, uh, through this it would project um, different positions for the camera totally exciting totally wonderful totally um, thrilling yet it didn't allow for the dramaturgy to take a back seat to most of this um, what else about this uh, blank modernist stage half Brechtian of course um, the dichotomy between um, Stanislavski in theater, method acting, and Brechtian theater is also a false dichotomy because in order to gain interest in someone else telling a story, you must have a certain investment. Um, perhaps that actor is saying things from a place of experience, a place of sadness, a place of re- living that emotion that was originally in the script. Um, so we're always trying to get the attention and um, uh, stage as de Bordeaux's day, create the society of spectacle to um, reify, to change, to transform um, uh, uh, the ideas, the capital, the, the, the aesthetic, principles to overturn aesthetic principles in these settings. Um, more Ivo von Hove, um, again the projections showing chaos overhead. Um, he'll have real-time film, you'll have archive film. Uh, you start playing with the concept of, of real-time over asynchronous activities and behaviors on, on this stage. Again, um, he's famous for the huge L LCD, LED projectors. This is Ivo van Hove. Um, I think he's Belgium, Belgian, and he lives in Holland. He works with the Tonneau group. His actors are usually in modern dress. 
because he wants to avoid the I don't know the sense of of um, uh, suspending your disbelief a big term here's Mark Antony with with Caesar putting it across him across the table here's a rehearsal process um, so these are people usually in modern dress and um, uh, this is integrated as I do too in my work integrated with projected media now is this media archived is it real real time is it even in the future it's it's all of these things um, is David Bowie with Ivo van Hove doing some performance here um, layering um, segmenting on stage um, um, messes of uh, very nominal lighting uh, these are uh, moments uh, in a stage that becomes littered with debris rather than creating an illusion um, and usually taking on a classical script back to the club works what um, what is similar about this what is the Brechtian in a club what is uh, uh, an indicator that you're not we're not here to create an illusion maybe your life is miserable maybe you want to go somewhere to sp spark up your life maybe you're unable to do that maybe you're frustrated so what is what is a degree of irony in this um, some of these things look horrific but what can you do to mimic what is already going on in these clubs uh, I've been to plenty of when I lived in Singapore plenty of these clubs nothing special in terms of design um, uh, the kind of cheesy lasers taken off the shelf and projected through salmoniac uh, laser beams are simple and effective preponderant type media um, what else more Singapore um, and this is um, another club of, of consider the the configuration this is a club in Tokyo where these things are expressing the Ken system as light light up things here's Shanghai the Bund, the Bund with all its new buildings and um, dance and entertainment uh, Shanghai has some cool clubs um, uh, again the layering just like in theater um, uh, people like moving like sheep like herding here and there um, it's uh, interesting the spatial dynamics here's a club here in Singapore uh, oh no this is the Singapore in Singapore sorry um, Shanghai uh, architectural expo I've been in that building that's the English pavilion um, it was held all along this beach here some of the architectural structures were large the Americans sucked that year in 2010 um, but some of the pavilions they went all out um, architecture in China um, what is taken fresh from the West what is transfigured trans um, uh, changed um, to become something else and what items of intrigue are there presented in these things a club oh this is the rainbow room in Rockefeller Center very famous club um, which has been mimicked over and over and over again it's at the top of the rock um, uh, but I've been to the top of the Hyatt on the boom the Bund in Shanghai and it's very similar for lighting um, clubs again clubs again this is a club at the Peace Hotel on the in Shanghai still accommodating that 
1920s and 30s feeling. Um, Williamsburg, um, Central Park, taking from the very staginess of a city. The Morgan Library is beautiful. Um, what can we, t the subway system sometimes has a formal beauty to it. Uh, the Brooklyn Museum, I used to sit here for hours and do my Wi-Fi way back when Wi-Fi was new. Um, and then back to the clubs, back to Pollock. What, what was Pollock trying to do overall with his, his drips? Um, when would he say the piece is done? When is he channeling from a deeper subconscious trance-like state and when is he applying the um, uh, conscious mind to these things? Um, intrigued by these forms, uh, uh, Lower East Side, so dance clubs sort of take on the particulars of, of the New York surrounding. These are New York-based clubs. Um, here's some parametric things carved out of tunnels. More architecture. Um, more architecture as spectacle. And, yeah, here's a series of just buildings, bars, the lighting, the intrigue with the lightings, finding places to go off to, um, and then just of, of interesting forms on top of, of, of something you don't expect. And again, you turn the corner, you see this, you go, <gasps> you get gut punched. Um, this is uh, something unusual in the environment. This is the tunnel, famous club in the 80s. It used to be somewhat dangerous to go over there on the West Side Highway at night. Um, uh, but I've been through there and it's since turned to office buildings for tech workers. Um, this was old limelight, um, the church, which was a famous club in the 80s um, on uh, 20th Street and 6th Avenue. Limelight um, uh, places in, again, dealing with lights, uh, dancing, so forth. Um, what more? Do, a Zaha Hadid building, elegant, understated. Um, this is the new approach to um, the fluidity. Um, this is the so-called shed um, in Hudson Yards uh, complex. Supposedly it tracks up and down on these huge um, uh, uh, wheels, almost like railroad wheels. Um, it has artworks in it, it has installations in it. It um, is a pairing with the, um, the vessel, which they've closed because it became, after the fourth um, suicide at the vessel, uh, tragically by a young boy who went there with his family and just jumped through the middle or off the side. They've closed it down and um, they're going to, one report was going to chop it up and turn it into NFTs. Um, the trajectory of use. The tunnel went up, it was anywhere from uh, 100 million bucks to 200 million bucks in cost interesting design but the is supposed to give you vertigo uh, but it became like a suicide machine for for Americans um, which added another narrative to it and the point is that um, once you design these structures um, you can have critics talking about it approaching it but you can also have um, the public do what they would do with it. Now, were these copycats? Were they 
does the I never got beyond the first tier um yeah, it did, it did give a sense of vertigo, especially on the outside, looking at the scene, looking at this, um, uh, the shed, the performance and art space. Um, problematic, problematic. There's an organic response to this grandiose architecture in its an intention. So part of the assignment with the club is to play with the notion of intention. Um, where are we taking this? What, what would happen to it? How can we hack this up? How can you hack up uh, an escape room so it's less contrived and it's more yours? Um, different materials, uh, clubs in Miami on South Beach are beautiful and deco. Um, this is somewhere in Seoul, I think. A um, lot of fancy clubs in Seoul. A lot of slick fancy clubs in Seoul. So the outside, when we're approaching a theatricality in the great cities of East Asia, Korea, um, to a certain extent Tokyo, but China's really taken off with some wild architecture. Um, we see that fluidity again between, um, look at this, kind of a coagulation of expected forms uh, colliding. Um, we see, uh, this is in Europe. Um, oh, this is one of my favorite. This is um, Elio Saarinen's building uh, the TWA airport at... JFK, you might have passed it. Um, I think it was about to open before COVID, but, um, oh no, this is not the TWA. This is a work of Bruce Goff, more fancy toilets. I was, I think this is the lecture I have. Things with the, the TWA terminal, use of deep red, lighting, sectioning off um, peoples and populations, um, cacophonies, uh, order, looking for order within this, um, gaming illustrations, or was this illustration for Blade Runner? Um, yes, here's TWA. Uh, they turned this into a hotel and a club out at JFK. I can't wait to go in it, see it, move around it. Um, everyone's dressed up in the early 60s stuff. Um, here's a little hotel off the side. So instead of destroying the building, which would have been a, a tragedy, um, they preserved it and turned it into a club there on the site. Um, which leads us to preservation. Um, design and the objects within a certain epoch. Um, here's the club in JFK's abandoned terminal to become a nightclub and hotel. Here it is, beautiful building, preformed concrete. Uh, Errol Saarinen, um, the great Finnish architect. Um, and they even have a, a TriStar uh, constellation there propeller operated airplane. I love the, the look of that airplane too. Um, so um, this is um, an important discussion of what should we leave as record of spatial culture. Um, if we destroy all the buildings, Italy's uh, perfect with this or near perfect preserving all their wonderful buildings with laws and protection and creating green belts around the city where you can actually see sheep grazing um, just outside of the city before you get to the suburbs. Um, and then the American uh, mollification of its land, um, certainly Long Island was bastardized, chewed up, um, given over to cars, but in that 
the next generation responds 180 usually with contempt to that but was there something um, worth saving within that um, certainly here in the the Google mid-century modern uh, not Google the the terminal mid-century modernist terminal becomes a, a, a witness for that an example of that um, here's ancient Rome as it here's the the junk heap of testaccio um, which was the place of all the shards and now is the place of all the dance clubs. Uh, you see the boats going up and down, um, uh, going up and down. The Tiber over here is a famous 2,000-year-old flea market. I used to go there every Sunday and see what's over there, but that had been offloading boats for over 2,000 years, and this is the place where Romans put their junk, their shards, basically, in Testaccio. This is the district of Testaccio. Um, there's a couple more bridges. There's a bridge here. Um, Porta Portesi, the flea market, is here. So this place was turned into modern dance clubs. It's pretty fun. Um, and here's Testaccio again in the Roman configuration. That's the Aventine Hill um, is yet another hill of Rome overlooking these places. This is the Pyramid of Caius Cestius and the, the, the wall outside of um, Testaccio, kind of a souvenir from their, their dealings with Egypt. Um, here's a club on the inside of Testaccio and we're back to um, Shanghai and the cities of China that are, you know, feeling their uh, uh, moment, their, 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 their freshness, their newness. And a lot of this is expressed through these clubs. Um, how much are they attracting the vitality and energy of young people? how much um this is in dubai i think yes um how much is this supposed to represent a type of decadence but i contend it's one of the best snapshots you'll have of a society and city and a spatial identity spatial culture is to understand how clubs are configured what um they're about um, after COVID, we're regaining our energy to go be with other people, um, and so this is this is part of the the um, ethos of understanding fluid agendas in these spaces: the piazza, the club, the escape room, the American Mall, the um, Italian small streets where you have cafe tables along them, um, the souk, the uh, and there there are many different um, places in um, world culture where these things happen. Soon, or they have been changed with um, with COVID. So that is it for tonight's lecture. Um, I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you very much.